Good morning, rock and metal fans. Welcome to Iridium Rock and Metal Reviews. Um, today we're going to be going back to the best songs of the year. So we're going to go 1982. We're going to do it in in that order, in order. So on this year, maybe the picks of albums for me weren't as good as 1981. So I have got a couple of bands, two or three bands that appear twice on this list. Um, and there's, I've noticed. It's really cool as I've been going back and looking at releases from those years. There is some songs that are appearing on this list, and I've only heard like one song of theirs. Yesterday, April Wine appeared on the list. I never heard any of the others and of their music. Um, I was trying to figure out why that is, why I never listened to any of the others. I suppose at that age, when I was 12, 11, 12, 13 years old, unless me like my brother or something, had the album, I never really got to listen to it because of the money situation, you know. It was only maybe later on, and maybe I'd forgotten about the band by then, later on when I actually had money to buy albums. And they wasn't cheap back then. So perhaps it was just, you know, I heard that single that my brother had or someone had, and that's how it appears on my list. So, yeah, these bands that are appearing for the top songs, it might be the only song I've heard of them, but that's cool. You know, it is my top song, and that's the way it's meant to be for that year. So, and that does happen in this list as well. So, we're going to go 1982. I've got 12 songs, and like I said, there's a few bands that appear twice. Um, but there's some really good songs in this year. So, without further ado, let's go my 12th. Uh, and that's Van Halen and Little Guitars. So, this came off the Diver Down album, which was a probably the weakest album. Well, it was the weakest album for me of... Um, the Dave Lee Roth uh, period, you know, the Dave Lee Roth era, without a doubt. It was, a, I think it was about 25 minutes, 30 minutes long, full of little snippets and then cover versions of this and that. But there was a couple of good tracks and Little Guitars from Diver Down is my number 12. Really excellent guitar work from uh, Eddie Van Halen. It's a standout track for me. There was another good song, Where Where Have All The Good Times Gone, which was a cover, but I didn't really want to include that. That came close to my my top 12. But um, Little Guitars, for me, is a standout track. It's a fun song, and it fits in with any other uh, Van Halen album. It just, this album was a bit poor for them, uh, but that's my number 12. My number 11. Now, this is what I was talking about. This is a band, I haven't heard a lot of their music. I have heard, actually, another one of their albums, but this is a... I love this song, and that's Asia, Heat of the Moment. So this was a huge hit back in 82. I was looking back on it and how big it was, in America especially. Um, it was their debut album. First song on the album, big hit. And I remember it, it growing up. Um, yeah, and I, I, it was funny. As I was looking at the releases, I went to play it again on, on, the, on YouTube. Yeah, love that song. Really love it. Um, Brought back a lot of memories, that's good. So that's my number 11. My number 10, White Snake, Saints and Sinners, from the Saints and Sinners album. So th this had a lot of good tracks on it. I was playing about with Here I Go Again, Crying in the Rain, them two tracks where the original versions for me are a lot better than the ones they did redone later in the career. But Saints and Sinners has held up a lot more for me. Um, it wasn't actually a single. Although I thought it was, um, I don't think it was anyway. Um, but I don't know. I, I think it's. I liked all those tracks I was talking about. But I think where I've heard this one less, and it seems a lot fresher when I play it now. It's the Saints and Sinners from White Snakes, my number ten. Really good, obviously brilliant performance by Coverdale. My number nine. Now this is gonna. These band are gonna appear a couple of times on the list. So Iron Maiden, Twenty Two Acacia Avenue, storming song, fun song lyrically. Um, obviously I think this is the sequel to Charlotte the Harlot on the debut album what a great song what a great debut with Bruce Dickinson um, Number of the Beast was a 10 out of 10 album obviously front to back brilliant tracks um, and this was one of the standout ones for me excellent performance by everyone in the band one of my favourite bands anyway my number 8 now this might get a bit of a sigh from some people, but it brings back a lot of memories. It, it is the obvious choice by this band because it was one of their, probably their biggest hit they ever brought out, but Toto and Africa. 
this has got there's something about this song and i know it's not a real heavy rock song but i just love it i, I love this song and it never gets old now it comes on in my car never skip it love it i, I just don't, don't get tired of it i think it's a great song there's other toto songs by the way that i love especially later in their career their last couple of albums have been fantastic but this was a a great song and um really really like this toto africa my number seven scorpions blackout yeah this is great always remember the cover with i think it was rudolf schenker with the forks in the eyes and the, I, I loved it i absolutely loved this song um i think this was a massive step up for scorpions probably the most commercial album but actually grips me from beginning to end love every track on blackout album um and this was a great song to open with and you know like i said it's scorpions were one of my favorite bands in the 80s i couldn't stop listening to scorpions thought they were great klaus main distinctive voice Brilliant guitar work from Matthias Jabs and Rudolf Schenker all the way through the album at Blackout. It was hard to choose songs off of this, but Blackout's one of them. That's my number seven. My number six is, oh, sorry about this, Stone Cold Rainbow. Um, yeah. Jolyn Turner. What a great voice. Bought something completely different to Rainbow. Uh, their albums... I mean, I think this is off straight between the eyes. Their albums were with Jolyn Turner. I mean, they wasn't packed full of great songs for me. They was quite hit and miss, some of them. I wasn't into the, the full albums, but the Rainbow were one of them bands where their singles stood out and Stone Cold was a really good song. Sort of a half, a sort of bit, a ballad as such, but um, brilliant, brilliant song. Another one I don't get tired of. It comes on in the car. Love it. Absolutely love it. My number five. Y and T. Winds of Change. What an out what a song to close out an album to. Black Tiger was a great album. Um Y and T, a very underrated band. I think sometimes they probably didn't get what they fully, you know, that I think their album was probably, you know, two thirds full of classic, real classic songs. And there's some others that weren't so good, a bit throwaway, a bit filler, I suppose. And I think that might be the reason why they never made it huge. But their songs, when they hit the right songs, they were classics, real classics. And Winds of Change is one of my favourite ballads ever. That was my number five. My number four, Kiss, Creatures of the Night. Absolutely love this song. I think it's my favourite Kiss song. Um... I am a fan of non-makeup era Kiss. They are, my, but this was the last one where they had makeup, and then I think the next one was Lick It Up. But this Creatures of the Night, you know, it, oh, what a song! What an absolute storming song. Um, I'm not a fan of all Kiss's music, but this song, and that was another single, obviously, was a, a brilliant song. Uh, love it loud or i love it loud was off that album as well which is a great song as well but didn't it my it weren't good enough to do the 12 top 12 for me but creatures of the night love it absolutely love it brilliant performance by paul stanley as well on the vocals right it's getting interesting now number three i'm going to go back to a band i've already been on the list scorpions and no one like you i know i've i've played this song like well, especially when I was younger, non-stop. It was one of my favourite songs. So catchy. Like I say, this was the most melodic album for me, Blackout. Um, and this was so close with You Give Me All I Need. I wanted to put You Give Me All I Need on the list. And I, I was, you know, I love both of their songs so much. Um, and I, I sort of see them in the same vein as two songs that are together on the album that are so catchy. I think No One Like You, it was so big, um, such a such a great melodic song that that's my number three. Brilliant song. My number two, going back again to Y&T, Forever. One of the best Y&T songs ever produced. I absolutely love it. Guitars from Dave Menachetti in this, brilliant vocalist as well, but the guitar solos in this are just screaming. He hit some notes that are just real 
hero, guitar hero stuff. Absolutely fantastic. Anyone who's a, a fan of guitar solos and melodic and catchy, he was brilliant. Absolutely under, another underrated guy in, in heavy rock music. And that goes to my number one. Iron Maiden, back to Iron Maiden, Hello Be Thy Name. So I've heard this song <laughs> like I wouldn't like probably thousands of times. Never get tired of it. Absolute classic. This is a song I always say that if someone's never heard of Iron Maiden, and I'm sure most have, or maybe a youngster just getting into metal who wants to listen to stuff, and, and they say, you know, play me an Iron Maiden song, this is probably the song you play because it's got all the elements of a Maiden song in it. It's got the, you know, it's got the uh, epic feel of it. It's got the little uh, in, uh, stuff in the, like the quiet stuff at the beginning, and then it gets loud, and then it's got the Maiden. Bruce Dickinson air raid siren vocals across it. You know, that point where he holds that note at the beginning, you know, it just, when I first heard Bruce Dickinson holding that note and then going higher, I just thought, oh my God, you know, what, what's that all about? 1982 and there's, a, you know, someone singing like that. It was, well, you know, you had Dio about at the time, obviously as well. And, but I don't know, he bought something, absolutely amazing to the band um and like say so they tell a story like no other band don't they um lyrically they are you know probably the best one of the best bands out there to to put you transport you into the world they want you to be absolutely excellent how i be thy name i am maiden so that's my list my top 12 i hope you liked it please put any suggestions down underneath that i might have missed or um, any you want me to react to as well from 1982. If I haven't heard them, I'll do that. Thank you very much. Please subscribe. Right-hand button down the bottom. Thanks. Bye.